should be live. All right. All right. Okay, guys. It's six o'clock and change, so let's get started. Say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we got all hands on deck tonight, so the <coughs> warm is taken care of. And on our regular agenda tonight, we are removing number 15, 16E, and 17. That's what I have on my list. Anybody's got anything else or changes? You say that again, Mr. Mayor? Yep. It's uh, number 15, 16E, and 17. They've been removed from the agenda for this evening. Lucas, what do you got? Uh, can we please add a 9F? Resolution directing Colliers and OT to sell bonds. Resolu try it again. Resolution to? Resolution directing Colliers. Uh, that's already now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and Onset Twitchell to sell bonds. So basically Colliers being your bonding agency yep. and OT being your bond council. Okay. All right. Anybody got anything else change-wise? And then do you want to add Eno, Eno's discussion? Yep. Where did you so want to put that? Wherever you'd like. Let's put it at, uh, let's put it between 8 and 9. More ink on the agenda, or are we good? Nope. Motion to approve. Okay. Second. Ryan makes a motion. Chelsea has a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, agenda is approved. Okay, and the consent agenda. Anybody got any questions? You know, I think it's pretty cut and dry on this one. Any of the documents changed from last night, Brenton? Mm, not that I know. <coughs> we should have had. Well, you should have um, D and E. We're probably uploaded up mm -hmm. just recently. Oh, so the one so you have them up there. The one like. question I had was the um, the shared use path. Is that the final payment? We have just five thousand dollars retainers since the meeting. So the we'll retainer, through, retainer is the only piece that's yep, left. Yep. We'll be through the seven final, which is tonight. The balancing change order tonight, and then we'll have the final okay. final payment. And then if we have any costs for removal. If we have oh. that taken care of, so there's a I little know, bit. That's, I, that's why I yeah. was kind of asking: is it, yeah. what, what's the plan for the removal? So uh, we're working, reviewing proposed agreement because one of the property owners is asking for some different things. Okay. That we, so it's still stuck in the same position. Hasn't yeah. changed. Hasn't changed yet. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, anybody else? There was my accept a motion to approve the consent agenda as it is. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one thing. So the dollar amount for Colorado 17 should be special be thirty one thousand six hundred nineteen dollars and two cents. You signed the wrong one. Thirty one thousand six hundred nineteen. I had a math mistake. So right there where it says thirty six, that should be thirty one. <coughs> oh, they signed the wrong one and sent it back to me. Say, say the number again, Jim. Thirty one six one nine point zero two. Got it. Just okay. kind of set for it. Okay. All right. Anybody else got any other questions? Otherwise, accept a motion with the uh, change. So moved. Okay. Dave made a motion. A second? A second. Brian is a second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the motion carries. <coughs> Minutes from last time around. You guys have a chance to look and see anything? Look good to me, but yeah, look, look accurate. Motion approved. Okay. Brian made a motion. In a second. I'll second that. Okay. David is a second. So all in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. All right, we're at public comment. Anybody got anything you want to talk about tonight? Go ahead. 
Hey guys, my name is Brandon River. Uh, oh, can you, could you yeah, use the microphone up here, please? <clears throat> people. Um, my name is Brandon Reber. I uh, just moved over to the west side of town a couple months ago. Just got a couple questions um, that I'm sure have been asked before, but I figured if I don't ask, I don't know. Um, so we're looking to plant our boulevard trees. And um, for the for the, the, the public right-of-way permit, it's like a $200 fee. And I understand the public right-of-way permit to, uh, you know, to dig in public right-of-way. And I kind of talked to Keith a little bit before this so that it, it might be a moot point at this at this juncture, but um, just wondering if that's something that could possibly be examined um, for the planting of, of trees in public right away. So I'm not digging up the street or ruining anything. But so on the right away, we are on agenda in 20. We're going to be talking about right away permits in regards to if you have to have a right away permit or not. So okay, that will be a discussion on 20. We'll be talking about that based on I know your conversation with Keith and feedback on that and we're looking at that a little bit more because we're trying to encourage the boulevard trees is actually required by ordinance so we're going to be talking about that here on gen m20 yeah and i don't know probably gonna it just seems a little steep to plant a yeah. tree yeah um, so we're going to talk about that one there awesome and then the second one um also with planting trees um, i'm establishing a lawn which which takes a lot of water and i don't know there's no sewer max currently in the city um I know, you know, I'm paying for all the water I'm using up front. I'm not flushing all that water down my drain on the back end. So I don't know if you guys have had any, had any discussion on a possible max sewer. We'd love to be able to do that. The problem is, is that the good percentage of residents flush their sump line down the sewer, and we have no idea how much is actually being processed by our lagoon versus what is actually being used. So it. it, it I hear you. You're not the first person to bring it up. The problem is right now we don't, we can't, we don't have a mechanism to be able to monitor the outflow coming okay. through the sewer to be able to say, all right, there is either a maximum or something. If if we basically put an ordinance in place saying no more sump lines going into the sanitary sewer, then we could put a max in place. But as it is right now, it's causing so many issues with our lift stations and everything. With some people. Well, it just happened with this last rain event. Friday. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's the fundamental problem. We'd love okay. to be able to cap it, but right now the way it is, it's causing too much of a pain. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. I just, yeah. So mm -hmm. I hear you. I, you're not the first person to raise that topic. So it, and and to again, in the grand scheme of the world, there are far bigger problems, but um, just yep. figured I'd ask. Nope. So. so that's the rationale of why it is the way it is. Okay. And that makes sense. So, so okay. thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Welcome got? to town, by the way. <laughs> yeah. uh, anybody else want to say anything or move along? <coughs> going once, going twice. All right. Sheriff's report, I don't think they're here, so. I we'll don't see any update document. He must they have do. submitted anything. Yeah, we didn't have it. We typically don't get it this time, do we? Do we get the first? If we're able to get it to the first meeting, then we give it to you. Then. <coughs> if it's not the first meeting, because sometimes we have an issue of. Timing okay. because they don't have all the data available, then we give it to you the second meeting. So it's whenever it's available, we do give it to you. And then if you do have any concerns, uh, I could kick that back to the deputies if, you're, if they're not able to make it. I know we are looking at a different night for night to unite, uh, having it sometime early October. Mm -hmm. I know that was one thing that they would be bringing up. So uh, we'll keep everybody posted once we get a night solidified for that. Yeah, yeah work around the church schedule. Yep. So, okay, we'll just we'll, we'll pause that. Maybe they'll come in later. If not, we'll just we'll pick it up next time around. Yeah. All right, Barrett, you got the next one, number eight. Okay. So for uh, number eight, at the direction of the city council, we extended the de uh, deadline for this property at 402 Main Street to August 15th, which was a Saturday, uh, to abate a nuisance of uh, items that we classify in the ordinance as junk and building materials. Uh, staff visited the site today and took pictures and included those in the report. Um, it, from my observations, it looks like there's some substantial improvements to the property, but under the uh, language of the ordinance, the nuisance hasn't been completely abated. Uh, so we just wanted to bring this uh, in front of the city council tonight to verify how far you'd like staff to go, if you'd like us to enter the property and abate the nuisance or not. Um, also in addition, I received uh, comments from the property owner 
Uh, she said she's a full-time caretaker and couldn't be at the meeting tonight. And then also, uh, Mr. Nelson is in the audience today. He's the one who's been cleaning up the site, and uh, he can answer any questions that you may have. Okay. So have you, I mean, you guys had conversations, I take it. Okay. So where did he say where he was at with it? or? I mean, is this going to get done, or? We well, from my understanding, it sounds like he could accommodate by taking the items on the porch and putting those inside. Uh, however, he said that the orange item that you see in the photo is some sort of uh, fan uh, machinery, and uh, that would have to be carried out of sight. <coughs> he states that that is, is in his property, and uh, he would uh, has no means of removal. Items. <coughs> okay. Do you want the city to move them? Let me ask kind of what's coming down to is if we're going to abate this thing, that was the point. Let's get it cleaned up. So, you're the one? Yeah, please. Yep, please. <coughs> yeah, I got pictures of it. I, I cleaned everything off the deck. So, that is a lot. Okay. Of them fans and stuff is the landlords. I don't know, they've been there for 10 years, I guess. But, mm -hmm. So I, I don't really know what it means to be here and what you've got. But, but as far as all that stuff on the deck, I got that off. So, so, so the, the, fans, the fans right in this area, you mean? But, yeah, there's some fans under that tree there. Yep. They're kind of growing in the trees. Okay. I know they've been there a while. Yeah. So but, I mean, I cleaned up, there was a real barrel there and a couple of things that I, I cleaned up here. I got pictures here from my minute. All that stuff on the deck. I put that up there. There's decking. I got up there. I put up and put a new deck on there. I'm just this guy owes me some money. I'm just putting my stuff in there. I'm just trying to get some payment on. That's basically the bottom dollar for the rat on that. So I just got stuff in there so I don't have to run out to Christine. So um, I, I thought it'd be okay up there. I got a fence up there. I took all the doors and put inside and took all the only thing that's laying up there is that decking material that I was going to put on the deck there. So there's nothing up there anymore. I have pictures. Of Okay, so the fan, fan and that other stuff there belongs to someone else. That's the landlord. Yeah. Okay. Has he been informed of that? Yeah. Uh, she's been informed. She's received multiple letters and emails and is aware of the issue. Okay. I mean, I can get them out of there for him. If you want to pay me, I'll get them out of there. I got to get a front and lower. They're big fans. Mm -hmm. I've seen them. I know what they're. Yeah, so, I mean, if you guys want me to get them out of there, I'll show you. Know. But, uh, I got to get this. If they've been sitting there that long, they're probably no value. So they're probably landfill or recycle. Yeah, they're scrap iron. Scrap at this point. Yeah, so they're probably, yeah. I, I mean, I, again, that's if you not can, my property, but I, if it would help for everybody's sake, I'll get them out of there. Yeah. If, I mean, that, that's what we would do if we were to authorize the abatement anyway, right? Right. So, I mean, so if you're going to take it, take it and get rid of it and scrap it, I would say go for it. Okay. All right. I see you. What I'd probably do is get a hold of the land, just inform them the gallery, and just let her know that the work that's going to be moved. Okay. So we'll give another week deadline. So, so then why don't we just get a letter and know that that we're going to get to by the end of the week? Okay. So. Do you want the new pictures? I can email them to you, Barry. I can drive by there on the way home and double check. Yep. So we're good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, anyhow, they, I still got the decking material for that. I'm going to put a different deck. Okay. On that. I, I'm just this is just a part time thing. So okay. yep, no Thanks, problem. You guys. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So let's do that. Then you follow up with her, and we'll get that squared away. Is this a formal council uh, action to vote to give staff the permission to the premises? Good one. Okay. Go ahead. I motion that we give staff the permission to assist in getting rid of those fans or the okay. current second printer. All right. Dave made a motion. John does a second. All in favor say aye. 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 There you go. Whichever's easier. <laughs> yep, I know. The motion carries. So. Press the easy button. <clears throat> All right, so who wants to introduce uh, Al? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bing, Bing, we just put it on the agenda. <laughs> Bing, we just put it on the agenda. <laughs> I'd say. Barry, you want to just go ahead and. Um, I guess I apologize. Do, would you like to state your concern, what you're trying to resolve, and maybe staff can address? Well, I don't know if you guys have seen the plan, I guess. 
I have, but I don't think there'll be no, anyone no, else has. No. Is it just about so the maybe if you want to just ordinance have that out and just kind of do a quick overview with the mic? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Sherry, I didn't mean to diss you if you were going to no, be the one doing the mic. I just. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Okay. So. You might want well to start at the beginning of this one. I'll just kind of give us, you can do it briefly, but just kind of give a synopsis well, of why we we're here. Well, we have proposed building here since, uh, <laughs> I guess, most of the years ago, I guess, you know. But uh, anyway, I guess the main objective is, you know, is uh, adjacent to kind of Comic 17. You've got the existing that we have on the south side and the dentist on the north side. And if you look at the parking lot, the way it's drawn now, you know, it pops out We had an issue with that, you know, um, because what it does is it's just it makes an obstruction, you know. Okay. Um, it was drawn by the city engineers originally, you know, it was a straight through. You know, we actually go back on the 2005 initially where we had not only this potential future mall, but one on the one south side as a straight through. Okay, so that was a long term plan we had for years. Okay. So we kind of stuck to that. Okay. Uh, engineer drew it as a saying too. Um, and for what uh, we're coming is that the new ordinance is coming in, you know, I guess um, that uh, we're getting bumped out and bumpers are coming in and and what's the result in is is us changing the lots, us changing the building. Uh, the building shrunk three times. <coughs> finding, you know, I guess uh, on discovery that the ordinance really hasn't changed a lot, they just went to force, but then the previous ones were built and we had no idea that, you know, we built accordingly what we were, you know, what the premise was saying. So we see this as, you know, as the, uh, the buffer, I understand the ordinance, but we also see as the existing grandfather, you know, from one end to the other end, it should be a nice, easy, nice, easy, straight pull, nice traffic pull with no obstruction. Um, the, uh, Buffer on the uh, north side, we have a full ten. Uh, I think there's like two or three feet <coughs> of existing over there. The uh, perhaps maybe a five foot buffer on that gives a little more leeway because we end up shrinking that side too as well. The more we shrink the parking lot, and then, then we get a parking issue, then we also like the building to shrink it. Like I said, we shrunk this four times. Last year, what the deal we had going on with the uh, previous uh, developer that this building actually was bigger. Initially, it was much bigger. We didn't have an issue, you know. Now we're calling issues, <coughs> you know, just the bills. And um, being said that, we're also talking about financial issues that we're paying for services here, multi times, you know, structural to architectural to, you know, HVAC, and it just keeps going on and on and on. So we see it the simplest, a very simple solution. I mean, what we've seen is actually is just a nice, simple drive through in the front. Nice easy traffic flow, liability, you know, we lift, you know, keep the liability down, nice flow of traffic. And if we're able to acquire, you know, maybe a five foot offset, you know, on the north side and perhaps on the east side, but there, you know, there's some give and take there, no doubt, because we have a hydrant, existing hydrant sitting there that has to be, you know, mm -hmm. in that area and protected. So maybe there's a few feet there we could probably actually grab because we only have 11 foot for backing up, you know, so a couple extra feet would help, you know, for backing up about hitting something. We're just basically looking at just to make this what you know we call it, I call it common sense. You know, just a simple drive through, you know, and this is nothing that uh, we haven't uh, changed. We've had this in our in our perspective for since two thousand five. You know, a nice simple drive through all the way across, you know. We just like to see a nice, easy flow of traffic and keep it as simple as possible. And safe. Yeah, safe. So I mean, that's basically so, you know, what, I'm, what I'm looking to do is if we're able right. to get the choir back. So I was over there and uh, talked to Al about this on Thursday night. And we were talking about this too. Um, 
so you know you know you guys all know where this is at it was more like in the front to have the continuity like right now you see on there kind of jogs back a little bit with the road i can see where he's coming from on that if we're going to have a presentation for you know what the town's looking like we don't need to have i don't know i'd like to see the continuity up there too i don't know i, I, don't I really guess i don't have sure what you're saying you're saying here, the right building here. is sitting back versus yeah whatever. this is this has gotten everything's gotten pushed back a little bit i remember Barrett, how the much the buildings are all going to be the in same line. It's just that because it's a parking, ten foot buffer in the front yeah. now, mm -hmm. that pushes that the park. this building back. Yes. Well, well the buildings are lined up. Through, yeah. Coming through and then it's right through here. Yeah. So yeah. This is over here. So this yep. is back here, the line is straight up. Oh, okay. It's pushed yeah. back here. So it makes it sound different this way. Yeah. Okay. This guy here might be in the structure. Yeah. And we're talking it's about snow removal and things like that as well, just having it straight. Plus, it looks consistent that way. I mean, being the others are already there, you know, we can argue about whether they were done right or not, whatever. <clears throat> but it is what it is at this juncture. Yeah, fair. Well, I, I have some comments on this. So, you know, the city just spent $160,000 to uh, adopt a comprehensive plan. And basically, in that plan, it says that the city is supposed to go through uh, planning and development application and processes to enforce what we have so that we get that vision with our city. Um, this issue came up during the building permit process, so staff has streamlined the process where we have checklists down, we have, uh, we delegate tasks amongst <coughs> different departments, and we have processes set up where we bring an application through uh, up to its completion. During this process, we identify that one of our ordinances states that if you have a parking lot that fronts right away and there's nothing obstructing that view uh, between the right away and the parking lot, that you're obligated to provide this buffer space so you can put landscaping in and break up the view. Now, in the requirements, it states that 10 feet is required. Uh, I stated up front, in my personal opinion, I think it's uh, excessive. I'm open to a text amendment proposal to reduce that width. And one nightmare scenario that I can imagine is if you have two lots that are by each other, they both have that 10 foot width, well now you end up with this 20 foot width, which in my opinion is a waste of land. So uh, I'm thinking in order to resolve this issue, you know, we have to think about this globally on how we want to uh, make this adv uh, advantageous to everybody. I think it'd be in the best interest of the city to bring forward a text amendment proposal where we would reduce this buffer width from maybe like 10 to five feet so it's more reasonable and it's not eating up as much land. And then you can get that continuity. Now, Mr. Eno's application was pretty unique what he was doing is he was taking multiple <coughs> lots and he's trying to do unified development. That's the ordinance that we just passed where <coughs> a property owner owns multiple properties and they have the same zoning designation. We look at it as one lot instead of three. And But what made it more complicated is he already had a non-conforming uh, development on one of those lots and we had to put it together with the new development. So basically what we said is what, whatever's been built can stay that's grandfathered in, but everything after has to meet our requirements. And uh, as meeting our requirements, we identified that was one of the requirements for his property, and it was unique in that it was a double fronting property where he had right away on both sides. So he ended up with like a 10 foot buffer around the whole perimeter of his lot. Um, I think for future <coughs> development, if we want to avoid this issue, uh, we, you could direct staff to do a text amendment to reduce that buffer width to, to, so that makes more sense <coughs> and we're not wasting uh, so much land with just this buffer strip. <coughs> so uh, my proposal going forward, if we want to resolve this issue, I would just ask for your direction to go ahead and start working on this application. So just so I'm clear then, the parking lot would come up five feet is what the, in the front, it'll, it'll right? right and that's that existing. also on the side of the dentist too, you would yeah. that see that yeah. shrunk a little bit. So that you could, they already have theirs. Right, okay, so yeah, so you're talking to me. Yeah. 20 feet, so we have five, and they yeah. have, we still have like eight feet probably. So yeah, well, you, you, still have, you still have a buffer yeah. of some type between them. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 So I think in a situation like this, you know, you can look, yeah. you know, between two visions, even like a case by case, you can look what's existing. You know, if we're on the other side, it's all wide open. Yeah, that's all for sure. me. No, no, you understand. Okay, you know what I mean. Uh, and what you have to realize is that would have to go through a public hearing process. His uh, permit is already approved. He can go ahead and build as is. 
if uh, you do give us direction to bring that text amendment <coughs> forward, we would have to wait for that to go through the public hearing process and then resubmit a new uh, building permit application with that proposal so that when building inspections goes out, uh, our department goes out to inspect the property, they see that it's the same as uh, his site plans. So there's a process involved here, Correct. what you're saying. Okay. Oh, wait, so you're saying that we would be able to get a permit and so you, I, I believe your permit is already approved unless there's other departments that haven't signed off on it. Uh, I think we're waiting for five years. This, what is that three out of four? Okay. That's all I want to make but sure. But if they're changing the plan, yeah, the, the, building could, the building could be worked on, and the parking lot would have to be up we, in there. We could still. Do phased, yeah. So you could do the build okay. in theory, in yeah. theory of this, you'd be able to do the building. But then the parking lot would have to be resolved one way or another. Yeah. So, because yeah, the building permits for the actual time, time structure. Right now is, is really yeah. Is yeah. But the building's probably yeah. more critical at this juncture mm -hmm. than the sure. parking yeah, lot. Foundation. So that's what yeah. I'm saying. We could do yeah. this as a phased approach at this juncture because nothing's going to change with the building. No. This has got to do with parking lot. Typically, you're not going to build a build. You're not going to build the parking lot first. Yeah. You're so build, yeah. Building yeah. a building. So. What do you? I mean, as far as a, like a text man, how long does that take? Started that. Typically, uh, I don't know, I think we've been looking at about six to eight weeks just oh. because of the public hearing requirements to uh, advertise, notify the public of the application. So that's controlled by state statute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this bill has been viewed by so many that in six to eight weeks, that's, that's not put us until October. <coughs> what about for the site work, though? I mean, do you, what date were you thinking that you would need to start the parking lot? Well, you one thing, and it's, it's, we, we actually switched now from the tilt up kind to a stick build, you know, so I can put that parking lot in almost any time. You know, I guess on the drive, you know, one of the buildings getting built, you know. So then, so then, the more, you know, hurdles we have, the longer duration of time right now with the heating charge, the heating charge already, you know, and we should have to acquire that all before we are. So we just got to, you know, like I said, from my perspective, we're ready to go since the spring. Mm -hmm. So the longer it sits, it sits, it sits. And if we do get a, a fall like we did last fall, the parking lot may not be able to get in if we can't figure out that the text that is still sitting pending, you know. So I just feel like there's a shizzle that could probably be down here. I guess I mean, it's, it's just common sense, you know. That's what I look at. You know? Could we have a for the parking lot? Well, unless we And do, then if it gets approved, then we can, what would that be? Add to it. Add to it and then do that little well, yeah. we, I mean, if we're yeah. going to change our ordinances to match the situation, can we make a exception to this? Because by the time it's done, we fit our Yeah, fit that's our kind ordinances. of what I'm thinking, This is too. the impetus to change our, Do it. our, our text amendment, our <clears throat> ordinance, to be more process. This, the process. This is unique enough because it's probably, I don't know, we're going to run into a situation like this again, based upon where we're currently sitting anyway. And all, just to reconfirm, all we're asking for is a change to the setback for the parking lot to the west, the buffer is up <coughs> to 17, and the change to the buffer to the dead side, right? That's the only thing. Well, I think right. changing it to five feet. Right, yeah. that's the change, so right? Five. That's the yeah. only thing. Yeah. 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 Existing, you know, and you know, maybe... And the city engineer didn't do it the same way. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe the direction you can give to staff is, for right now, we'll enforce it as five. And then uh, we'll work on a text amendment to make sure that that gets yes, altered. That's what I would yeah. like to see. That's what I think we should do. I would like to motion that we direct staff to enforce the current buffer as stated by the various five and position here to um, do a text amendment to adjust the um, ordinance to the new, to this new statement. I am abstaining. Yep. Anybody else? Dave made a motion. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> it's also I'll second. <laughs> Any questions? Or? No, I don't have any questions. Okay. Going once, going twice. Okay. Oh, yeah. Who said two? Okay. Sorry. Sorry, I thought you were talking to him. I didn't catch it. I apologize. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. You abstain. I apologize. I'm like, well, thank you guys for just talking. Uh,
never mind. Apologize for being so quiet now. Yeah, stop Make sure you're weak. <laughs> All right. Okay. Moving on. All right, Lucas, you're up. Thank you, guys. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Uh, I'd like to just do, so here with you, Mr. Mayor, uh, nine uh, A through E all together, and one motion so I can scroll through all of them. This is a just, through E? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the, all these are just resolutions directing the Special Assessment Commission to levy assessments for last year's projects. So uh, 2019-1 uh, levied that in the amount of four million four hundred thirty-eight thousand two hundred sixteen dollars and seventy-six cents. Uh, Improvement District 2019-2 levy assessments in the amount of three million eight hundred and sixteen thousand dollars eight hundred sixteen five hundred sixty-seven dollars and fifty-nine cents. Improvement District 2019-3 in the amount of $2,240,482.14. 2019-5 in the amount of $2,315,414.29. And Improvement District 2019-6 in the amount of $7,083,832.00. 60 cents. So 2019-1 is Lakeview. Lakeview Lake Drive. 2019-2 is Roundabout and 79. 2019-3 is 63rd. 2019-5 is Vistos. And 2019-6 is Covery. Okay. So at this stage, it's just asking them to start the process of Start the process yep. of reviewing that the amount and then up the assessment for the district that was defined with that project, correct? Yep. So, so it isn't actually the amounts of no. you know for individual properties, it's just for the total you know, to start the process. So, yep. mm -hmm. so the total cost of the bond that we're looking at here. I mean just with this month. I think it's around twenty-three. Twenty-three? Yeah. That's for all of these projects. Yep. Yeah, but we'll bundle them all together so we can get a good rate again, right? Correct. Yeah. And that's why Collier's is pushing to get this stuff done now. Right. We want to get it done before the election. Well, because so. the rates are fantastic <laughs> right now. <laughs> you know, let's get real. I know. We all know. So like I said, uh, we can just do all of those. Things. So yeah, just to reiterate what Brian's stating, it's just starting the process. This does not state who or what or where or when. We present the information to the <coughs> assessment, assessment commission. commission, they review it, they provide feedback on how it will be assessed, that type of thing. And I think the critical one is for the roundabout, we again have a million dollars from the county. Mm -hmm. We as a city last, was it last meeting or two meeting to go <coughs> on 1.25? Last meeting. Last meeting, 2.5 million. And we have talked no. and discussed with the school district, 1.25, okay. not 2.5, 1.25 from the city. And we talked with the school district are pushing them for a Assessments that we're we're state. pushing for 150 percent assessment on them. Oh, no, we've I got an email here just a little while ago. They're not as thrilled about 150 percent, but uh, the logic behind it is that they're the primary driver of pretty much all those projects that Lucas listed. Uh, just so you know, also is when the next steps is there will be a public there will be a public hearing that for the special assessment commission. So the public could go and protest their proposed assessment or give their input, and then that would go. They would make a recommendation, and that would go to you guys. Then and that so includes the schools. That, if they're upset yeah. with the one hundred fifty percent. And they can, yeah, yep. they can make their case okay. to the special assessment commission and to the city council, okay. and the city council decides what they would like to do. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, so this is really just getting the process started for. From the council side, so you're not approving any individual amount for no. any single property or any properties at this time. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the resolution to direct the assessment commission to begin the process of getting levies <coughs> for projects 2019 1 through 2019 6. Second, okay, John does a second. 
I'm going to roll call this one, guys. John? Yes. Dave? Yes. Chelsea? Yes. Brian? Yes. All right. Motion carries. All right, so we'll go to 9F then, uh, Lucas. So on, a, a quick question with those. Uh, council previously directed staff to send out letters for uh, all these projects to notify uh, individuals that they are getting assessment. Do we need a bond for that, too? It's going to oh, be well. expensive. <laughs> 2019 has, two has over 1,800 parcels. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so just postage for that is going to cost $800. Do you want us to do that? Our, our consistency, yes, we're going to have to do that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I know. We'll keep the post office happy. So the letters right? will go out. What, that those letters go out once the commission has determined that there will be an assessment provided. Yeah. Once they, they create the assessment list, then it gets sent. <coughs> out and they're saying that you can uh, come to come the objection this. hearing. Okay. Yeah. No, we got to let so folks know. So that's, that's for all. That's for all the letters, or just the one. Just the one. Just the one. Is it city so this, this is going to be well over a thousand dollars, but that's part of the cost of that bond is to cover these costs. And, and you, that's built in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Okay. So it's absolutely the right thing to do. Yep. So then, uh, Mr. Mayor, nine F was just a resolution directing colliers uh, and on said which was to sell the bonds. So you'll all recall last year was just ten bonds. So now we need to do uh, extended bonds. So it's basically just a, a resolution hiring. Colliers as your bonding agency and on stage as your bond council. Yep. So moved. Second. Okay. Chelsea and John. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Tell me one, a good rate like we got last time there, Lucas. Well, we <laughs> all right. have all the control over that. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. I'm throwing it out not. there. <laughs> all right. Who wants the next one? Ken, Barrett, or Lucas? Yep, uh, the last River 6 edition reason, uh, if you recall, this was Jack Doyer's application for uh, last River 6 edition, where he took uh, three lots and, uh, lots and created two. Uh, with that application, he had a request to rezone uh, from R6 to R2. The first reading was approved at your last city council meeting. This would be the second reading, and staff hasn't received any comments. Uh, nothing has changed, and therefore staff recommends approval. So moved. Second. Okay. Gotcha. Dave, Brian. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 I think that's the one I from last time, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You want to say you abstain? Sure. Okay. All right. Barrett, you got the next one. Okay. Now for the next item, this is a request for a certificate of name change. Uh, what had occurred is Maple Lake Estates Edition was recorded. Uh, when staff submitted an addressing uh, plan request to the county, it got rejected because it violated one of the United States Postal Service's policies that street name proposals can't have to, uh, stew, two, God, I can't talk tonight, two street topologies. Uh, there's two roads. One was East Loop Road and the other one was West Loop Road. So loop is a topology, road is a topology. Having two together violates that policy. So, we asked the applicant to provide two street names and to rename the streets, which is effectively what we're doing. So we would be renaming East Loop Road to Burgundy Drive and West Loop Road to Concord Drive. Um, and uh, included in the packet, I attached the letter from the county explaining how that violates uh, USPS policy. And uh, unless uh, you have any questions, staff recommends approval. So I think there should be a resolution for this. I sent the resolution and certificate for us. Oh, You're actually yes. approving a resolution to change your name. Apologize, that was not included. Yes, it is included. Yep, it's at the end. So it's called a resolution to change, is that yeah. what we're dealing no. with here? And a certificate is attached to it. <coughs> Certifying that you approved it at this meeting. So moved. Second. Dave, Chelsea, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Brenton, you've got 12. <coughs> okay. Uh, I think they should be up there, Brian. Making sure. Um, so you want me yep. to pull up all three of them? Yeah, there's the three different ones here. If you start with the commercial one, that's probably the best one to start with. Uh, I do. We do have Keith here. If you have any more de any detailed questions about what these are or what's going on, um, 
really what we're doing some cleanup work housekeeping on some of our permit fees for or fees tied to building permits um, the first one you see I believe is the mechanic or commercial yeah this is the commercial one uh, if you scroll down a little bit Brian what you see in blue are the suggested changes uh, Keith has been going through this him and Caleb have to really see what is necessary what's not uh, a couple of changes like plan review fee and resubmittals the minimums we haven't had the minimums really occur too often so we feel it would be necessary just to re it would be appropriate just to remove them the sign permit uh, currently the say horse has a fee of five dollars per square foot for signage uh, when you look at West Fargo, Fargo, they're in the ballpark of 25 to 30 cents per square foot. So that's one area we're extremely off compared to our neighbors on is the cost for a sign permit. So our recommendation on that is uh, 35 cents per square foot. It puts us a little bit over what they are, but not the $5. So not having a $4 and 65 cent difference. Um, it also has in there the big area this is what impacts us the most is if a contractor or builder does work without a permit we've had this happen on occasion that there's actual costs tied to it so their permit would be double or it, it's broken out based on their permit value like I said we have had occasions where builders have started you know, say heck with it we're going to build and they start without getting the approvals, and sometimes we're into situations where they have to make changes. Uh, we had one last year where it was approved, but we had to do changes to the project anyways. So um, we like to prevent those situations, and like I said, have a additional cost if they do that work without it. They like said this for commercial. If you go, do you have any, if you had any questions on the commercial side? Are there any questions on commercial? No. If you go to the residential one real quick. And Keith, if I'm missing anything, let me know. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you scroll down, there. Keith did a good job of highlighting these in blue. Uh, the one diff big difference in this one is for residential properties, just like I was talking about, if they start work without a permit, those are down the bottom. And then the other area, if you scroll up to the top, or about halfway up, Brian. Yep, right there. Uh, install siding replacement only. So this is somebody that's residing their house. Uh, that's typically a, not much of a permit to review or plan review or anything. So having its own area, just like we have a deck permit, windows, defense permit, uh, basically assigning one fifty dollars per thousand in valuation. So it, line replacement. What, what's the it's just like if you're reading you an inspection of their siding. We basically the check to see if they did replace the siding. It's nothing real elaborate, uh, but this would be right now, if you're doing that, you have to get a building permit. So it does make this a little bit cheaper for a homeowner. If I mean, they, we haven't had that before. That's the thing, right? We have, I believe. Very few. Very few, but we have had them. Just so. surprised we're picking out that one. Yep. Replacing siding. Yep. So. It's just like I said. Uh, well, you're doing a significant modification to your attached to your building. <coughs> I would think that's that's kind of the governance, mm -hmm. right? Is that you're doing something that's attached to your building. So yeah. Like if mm -hmm. I put in a freestanding deck, I don't have to put it. I don't have to get the permit, but if I put in a deck that's attached to my house, that's when I. <coughs> yeah, there's been a couple it. residing permits this year, which is why it came up. And when it's yeah. a building permit, then you're talking it's potentially more expensive yeah. versus this would be. And this would be really big if we have like a real bad hailstorm storm, or something. Right? That's going to be what. Sure. The, when you have a lot of sighting is when you have a bad storm come through. It seems kind of funny that there needs to be a sighting permit, but not a patio permit. There's no. It, there like would be for a do, deck. There would be yeah for a yeah, deck. If you're going to do like gonna, rivers, yeah. then there would. <laughs> like if you're going to pour a patio, concrete patio, you don't have to get a permit. You right the way it's, it's set up. No. Yeah. I mean, we could create a zoning permit, but as far as building code, there's not really a safety element to it because it's all on ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, unless there's multiple ele elevations. Um, yeah. so like if, lot if there isn't, yeah, technically, if you have um, 
I mean, if you have a, yeah. like a retaining wall over four feet, that requires a permit because there's an element of safety because yeah. you can fall off. <coughs> and, and then uh, the shifting of the ground too. I like lot coverage for pet, for concrete. There's got to be a percentage. There is, um, but yeah. there's no permit tied to it. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's they're supposed to comply. Yeah. It's normally not too much of an issue. We haven't yeah. ran across it too much, so. But with the yeah. siding replacement, <coughs> what is the what is the review on that? Very little. Yeah. Well, that's, 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 that's what I'm I, I don't understand kind of why we're putting one. that one out yeah, versus kind of both. like a roof replacement. I, I would think that would have more potential future impact on North Dakota. Does mm -hmm. not we've we've gone along with North Dakota and they don't they've amended roofing permits, so we don't that doesn't require. So permit. this siding does. So where did this one come from? Is this from a, a state permit? No, no one else does that. I just it was something I proposed because. Uh, for the general homeowner that's replacing their siding, some of those get um, hefty. Because it's, it's about it's treated as a building permit, permit otherwise. So what he's proposing is that it would be separated out so it's not as a building permit. Because if it's done as a building permit, that sign, that's siding cost for doing the siding, the permit for it is going to be up there more significant. It'll probably be double or triple that hmm. if it has yeah, that. Yeah, it's just so it's not based on valuation. <coughs> like we've already done, they've already done it with. Um, Let's see, egress windows and decks. I mean, those are a flat, flat fee. Um, and some, I mean, I don't know what it costs to reside. Uh, you know, if it was a thirty thousand dollar reside, I mean, some of those building permit fees get kind of hefty. So it'd be good to reduce it. Mm -hmm. So this kind of helps because, also track. Like, I mean, okay. from the city standpoint, okay. it'd be nice to get, get extra fees. I mean, but at the same time, uh, there's no. There's no, not really a review and there's not really an inspection for yeah. so I think that's the big difference is he stays. <coughs> still if I go replace my siding today, I'm going to go do a building permit with him. Yes. It goes through a longer process, yeah. which has a higher value, which costs me more. It's Cost still, this is still a building permit. It's just it's our, just a, it's our our simple fee. It's just yeah. mm -hmm. It would have to go, it would be subject to a <laughs> plan review fee sure. and a building permit cost. Okay. Where with okay. this, it's just a more simplified amount. That is a lot cheaper for a homeowner. Yeah. So that that's what we're trying to do is just simplify the, the process on it. So that makes sense. And then if you go to the next one, if there's not any other questions on this one, the next one is tied to mechanical. So currently we don't do a whole lot with inspections tied to mechanical. However, there's been you know we're trying to uh, trying to get that into that ballgame. That's a specialized <coughs> area uh, with our relationship with Miss Midwest Inspection Services. They are capable of doing that, and we're working on also you know getting our staff more up to speed on those different areas too. But we don't have a fee structure tied to any mechanical inspections. So what we're proposing here is to get a fee structure in place for where those there's mechanical inspections necessary. Uh, that way we can inspect, have somebody actually inspect these items. And these are important areas. We're talking like when somebody's doing, you know, gas appliances or running gas in their house or their HVAC, um, heating, cooling, any, any of that stuff, that's, that's what we're looking at. So this is basically mirroring a very similar structure to what our partner is Midwest Inspection Services. That's what they use. A lot of it is very similar to the rates that they charge for us on that. So we're proposing to have fees tied to inspections for mechanical also. So this is all brand new? This area here, mechanical permits, is brand new completely. Okay. So I guess we could have did it all in blue, but. Oh, that's fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is so that commercial and residential? New. This would be applicable to, I believe, both. Yeah, they've broken it out in terms of yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's set up for both. Yeah. So this would be something that would be instituted <coughs> set up when a new construction is occurring, or if I'm replacing them, let's say, my central area people I have a fee and have a quick inspection, make sure everything's yep. done. Yes. Right? Correct. Okay. Which no, I think they haven't idea. been doing. What's that? Yeah. Uh, they weren't doing before I got when I got here. <coughs> it's, but it's something that should be done because I mean of all the things that could kill you in a house right. it's probably yeah. you know, 
plumbing, electrical, and gas. Yeah. So yeah. Excel is really pushing for us to start doing these. And um, I don't know that we're yet, but at least I mean, yeah. there's a fee structure. We're, we're trying to get the framework. Point, uh, since Pardon? we're since starting we're point. fees. Yep. Yeah. So uh, we bring it up. And yeah. But if they're replacing like a furnace, so you're saying on replacing a furnace on a house, that would have to be permitted? Yes. Uh, and, it, you know, according to this, it's a heating, residential heating appliance would be a $40 permit. Hmm. Um, and then it would it'd be someone that would go out there, yeah, one of us would go out there and make sure that the venting yeah. was right. Um, I mean, what's... I, I've seen yeah, people install their kitchen in the wrong and it's it got too hot in the wall right. and it started the house on fire. So. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just people don't realize that they need a permit for it. So, right, I mean, sure people understand. Yeah, while yeah, well, that it's basically going to be all the providers, right? Because it's typically going to be done by a <coughs> you know, provider like a, you know, All American or somebody. Yep. So, they're going to have to know that, oh, I can't do that work until I get a permit. Mm -hmm. So, it's going to be basically. And this is. The contractor that's going to be applying for the permit on our behalf or on the right. behalf. Yeah. And this is companies in town. Yep. Once we, I mean, so I mean, we get the fees, and then what? But once we go forward with, I was kind of thinking the first of the year is when we start mm -hmm. for residential. I don't know if we change change it for commercial or not. Yeah. Um, that was kind of my. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would get a list from other jurisdictions. I think I already have. Have most of the names and try to get and send it out to most of the, all the contractors. That what what's being proposed for you though? This is not anything new to the area. No, this is uh, so when you're talking about contractors going, oh, I just it's more education that yes, they have to get a permit in horse now, but having to deal with permits for these activities before isn't anything new when they're doing work in other communities. It's just new here because we've never had the structure to do it. So. We're playing catch up still, but we're trying to clean this up. So. Russ, you had a question? Yeah, by other communities, are they doing this in Fargo and West Fargo? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Consistency. Yes. Yep. Mm hmm. Okay. Any other questions, concerns? No. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution of fees. Okay. Second. Chelsea makes a motion. Don does a second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Right. <coughs> Thank you, Keith. Jim, you got the next one. All right, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. What I have before you is the balancing change order for the shared use tap. Increases the contract by $14,178.62. The makeup of this was additional seating in the bottom of the ditch. If you recall, there was a lot of ATV and other track tracks on the bottom of the ditch made sense to, to seed that and get it all established as part of this project since they were there. So um, it's additional. <coughs> uh, after we balance it all out, as you can see on the second page there, there are a couple items that we just overran, typical deviation. We underran a couple too. The big ones were the, were the top, were the uh, hydraulic mulch and seating class one. So, and then we had to take a little bit of area too where we tied in, tied our slopes in, so we increased our area of seating. Can I ask, say that again, what's the reason for the change order? Seating and hydraulic mulch, we overran the quantity that we originally imposed. For the reason? There were a couple spots where we had to flatten out the side slopes a little more than we had expected, and it required more seating further out, you know, it's more. And then the bottom of the ditch was disturbed due to four wheelers and that type of work. So they touched that up when they were out seating it, and that wouldn't that have been part of the job to begin with? No, we didn't go out that far because we just went to the tie points. Okay. And then we got out into the into the bottom more where, where it was um, disturbed. So is that just going to get beat up again? It's going to get beat up again. You'd like to say no. Yeah, I would really like to say no. But I've, I've, seen them. Them on the path. We, <laughs> I've seen them. I've seen them on the path also. And... Um, you know, we talked at one time about... Have we gotten signs? I thought we have not got directly. signs yet on there. That was going to be part of the removal of the, of the other path. We get That's those right. signs and stuff put on there That's at right. that time. So um, I guess my question to you, Brent, and are we going, do you want to run the removal of that, any cost through this project, or do you want to do it separate? Because I was under some proof we were going to do that separate. We could do it separate. Okay. Either one is fine. 
So if we close it out. That's what. That's my thought. Is we get this project closed out. It is through the North Dakota Park and Rec. We just need to get it. We need to get that done. Yeah. Okay. Any other conversation? Was I'm looking for a motion to accept the uh, change order. I motion to accept the change order. Dave then made a motion. You get a second. Second. Chelsea does a second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Almost all approved. All right. Um, okay, Brent, you got the other one here on the temp. Okay. Easement. So the next one here is for the 81st Avenue temporary construction easement. Uh, the 81st Avenue project was bid and awarded to Dakota, I believe, Dakota Underground. Uh, the anticipation of the Lakeview edition plat, first plat, first edition plat, was expected to have happened by then, and it hasn't been. In order to be able to have the project move forward, we need to get a temporary construction easement. In order to do that, our what we've paid for, temporary construction easements, the cost tied to that has been 77 cents a square foot. Cost tied to the project would be billed towards the special assessment district, the project. Um, so what we're looking for is approval to use 77 cents a square foot and purchase the necessary square footage needed to construct the road since the plat is not likely to be finalized or even happen here within the next few months. So we need to be able to move forward with this project. Otherwise, what we'd be coming back to the council is to stop the project. Or we haven't given a notice to proceed, but then we basically just throw out the bids and we'd have to rebid it later on, like next summer. But This project was requested by the school. This runs on the south side of their high school facility high school and athletic complex. When West Fargo schools platted their, their acreage, they platted half of the right of way for 81st Street with the intent of the Lakeview Edition of platting the other half of it. There have been numerous discussions within the city on the staff level about the appropriate way going forward with that. And as we're finding out that things might have to change just because mm -hmm. can't be flying right away. Um, this is an important part to the school complex and getting it done. Uh, this is a way of, of um, allowing access to that half of right away that the city doesn't have right now for the purposes of constructing that road. Okay. Okay, so just so I can be clear, the other side of the road you're stating is not platted yet. The, the side of Lakeview Edition on is not correct. The, side the, the south north, side. So all we've seen on that is preliminary plats, and that's what everything went off of, was the preliminary planning for the Lakeview Edition. But this, so you're stating the road should not change, correct? But something about the rest of the plat for us may potentially change that what I'm hearing. Because I'm saying we're, we're getting the approval to put a, we're getting an easy temporary to go construct a road on a portion of stuff that's not planning. Correct. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Am I yes. asking that correctly? Correct. Correct. Yes. So we go put this road in and then something happens. You can't take off the road. Your ordinance requires that if they're going to develop that in the future, they have to dedicate that other half. Oh, right. Yeah. All right. So, so that's, yes. we're okay with that, yeah. right? It's just, like, so just because it's not platted yet. You're going to cover through your through the ordinance and in the easement. The way it was drafted, it says that it'll, the city maintains that easement until such time as the plat is recorded or mm -hmm. the city executes permanent easements. Uh, or acquires that property. So yeah. the next so step. The city if something didn't happen, yeah. like you didn't happen, Correct. you have to go acquire that land yes. to do the permit. You yep. buy it in fee title or acquire a permit easement for it. But yes, yeah. okay. Given the location of this, a platting of that property is highly likely. Correct. It's just that okay. they've, <clears throat> the developer has some concerns and they want to hold off, they wanted to hold off, hit pause on the development at sure. this time. Uh, so we're looking at we still need to move forward with this project in order to be able to get the road constructed in time for the schools like high school for example actually happening so we need to get that moving okay. so, so are the costs included in the when the in the purchase I mean where do these costs come from <coughs> the fee we, that we would pay? we have we typically account for 
land acquisition within our estimates for that, but also in contingency of the we project. Have a construction we have contingency. Too. This would be yeah. modified now for ten, for temporary bonding purposes, and then when the final bonds come out, just like we did earlier for those five projects, we can take care of it. At that so point. the cost is rolled in, or it's factored into the mm -hmm. purchase of the land price. How much total is this one to be done? So right now, our er, Jim and their engineer are going back and forth to finalize the exact square footage. The cost is going to be ranging around sixty to sixty-seven thousand dollars, depending on where that total square footage is. The uh, developers, engineers, asking for five additional feet, and Jim is reviewing that to so make sure. So outside of right there's a construction there's how much is needed. Needed. and we had it at ten feet, and they prefer it to be five feet. Uh, it's just something we're going back and forth on. The right away itself, or where the road will be constructed, is not questioning that it's just the utility easement. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'd be looking at the 77 cents per square foot. That is what we've used throughout this whole year yep. for temporary construction easements. Treating everybody the same on that. And um, that easement would be the final square footage would be determined at, with our engineer and theirs to figure out what the most appropriate amount. Okay. So basically, you're looking for a record Appro approval, approval to be able to proceed to, with the yes. purchase or temporary easement yep. funding. So, so then so we can move forward with the project. Second. Okay, final question. Dean, second. Okay, go. When the final plan is done on Lakeview, they're going to have a temporary easement, correct? For utility? Yes. They will have 10, yeah. Typically, where the sticking just, point is, Ross, is I that. Know. Okay, Typically, when we do these, the service lines get extended on another <coughs> beyond that, into that 10 feet, beyond that 10 feet, yep. to get them behind any type of utilities. Yep. And that's where we're debating as to if they need an additional five or not. Okay. We just want to make sure that they're not planning on a final five for each. Okay. <coughs> okay. So, Brian made a motion, David a second. Any other discussion, guys? Otherwise, I'm going to ask for a vote. Okay. All in favor? Actually, I'm going to do a roll call. Roll call. This is money. John? Yes. Dave? Yes. Chelsea? Yes. Brian? Yes. Okay. Unanimous. And it carries. All right. So 15, we're not going to do. So we'll move on to 16. I'm going to pick that one up. So I can start. We're just doing all the resolutions to actually uh, create this project. Remember, uh, your last meeting we discussed uh, the Drainage. Uh, so, Jim, if you want to get into a little bit of the project, now. Uh, this is the this is the old um, old River Oxbow. We discussed the options at the last meeting. We looked at the cost alternatives from the last meeting, decided to proceed with that project. Uh, it's also discussed that it was going to be 100% city fund, 50% city fund, 50% special assessment. Uh, from that meeting, it was decided to be a kind of a shared project between the two. So in doing so, we need to start the special assessment process and create these resolutions and keep going from there. So Lucas's office is prepared to prepare so. <coughs> The yeah. district that we had defined is the drainage area. We looked at that last time. Didn't reinvent the wheel on that. Nothing else has changed in that <coughs> original estimate. So, so the first thing that's gonna change uh, River's Edge 2 was supposed to be Improvement District 2020-5, but Jim informed me that that project probably is not going through this year. So we'll call this project uh, Storm Sewer Improvement District number 2020-5. Five, okay. <coughs> so for, for that first one, Mr. Mayor, the resolution creating the district, uh, the district name will be uh, Storm Sewer Improvement District number 2020-5, and as Jim uh, indicated, the boundary area will be that drainage area. Uh, so that will be included as a, as a boundary map on that resolution creating the district. Okay. So, so that's your first action item. Okay, you guys have any questions on this one? <coughs> Al, just to let you know, I did get your letter, we got it, and I read through it, and I just want to acknowledge that. Um, I think what the council, or at least my, my impression is what I want to do, I know what, you, what you're saying in the letter, but I don't want to band-aid this one anymore. I want to come up with a permanent solution on this thing so we don't have to, I want your yard to be done with the, with having the flooding on it. We want to try and get this thing done. 
So I understand where you're coming from with it, and I appreciate you sending us the letter. I just wanted to acknowledge that. Thank you. So, um, by the way, how are you going to keep skateboarders and uh, four wheelers off of that? You want to make this Creating difficult? <laughs> No, I know you're. We could put signs in it right away from the get go. Right, I and mean. It's still my graph here. That's, you know, that's fine. Understood. Yeah. Let's hope we can do some teaching and putting up some signs. I don't know what, you know, I don't want to put up spikes or anything like that on that, on the cement. Well, but you know. the time with snowmobilers, you know, this winter cut it during the winter, not cutting it. I know. I've been trying to grow trees and they cut the goddamn trees off because they don't have any respect for anybody else's property. Mm hmm. Yeah, and that's been a problem forever since I've been back no, there. I so I know. Well, thank you for yeah. thank you all. Okay, so uh, guys, got any discussion on a otherwise we're looking for motion? Move that we create the resolution for creating the district. Okay, Dave makes second. a motion. Brian is second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, a is approved. Okay. The next one, Mr. Mayor, is a resolution directing the engineer to prepare a report on the feasibility uh, of this project. We had that last time we went through that last week. Okay. You still want us to approve something, though? I mean, or you want to? Yep. So, so moved. Yeah, so, so this resolution is approving that yep. report. So. John makes a motion. Or directing to prepare that report. Yep. Yep. Then, Brian, you do the second? All right, so all in favor say aye. Aye. All right, the resolution <coughs> carries. Now it's the resolution accepting said report. Time to move fast. <laughs> yeah. So moved. Okay. Second. John makes a motion, Brian's a second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, and on to and D. Finally, just the resolution directing the engineer to prepare plans and specs. So moved. Second. John and Brian. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Okay, let's get that uh, put together. Yeah. Nope. No, I'm no, off the list. Ease off the list. Yeah. Yeah. And 17 is off our list for the evening, so we will proceed on to 18 truck. <coughs> okay. We have a couple more coming. We have a few more. Yes. We have like two that. more food truck yeah. or vendor food truck slash vendors. Uh, one is to the part. My understanding, Big J's is for participation with the uh, food truck events that we're having every Wednesday at Horses and Church. And Holy Smokes, my understanding is that's more for bean days, what they're looking at having like a tent or something for that. Uh, that's, yeah, that's local. Dan, Dan Beecher, <clears throat> I, believe, I believe it was that. Yep. And he did that catering for a while, like a couple meals a week when COVID first started. Uh, and I know there was a lot of positive feedback or from okay. residents on that there, and they appreciate that. Um, but anyways, both of these are for uh, their food truck permits for the rest of the year. Uh, tied to food trucks, just more of an FYI for you. Uh, we anticipate having four trucks out there on Wednesday. Uh, we're trying to beat the drum to let people know. So far, knock on wood, weather looks like it'll be decent. And also, uh, my understanding is that's the first day teachers are back into the schools to get ready for the school year. So we're going to be letting the schools know too that the food trucks are going to be present because we think that might be a, a good thing for them to be able to have a different choice for, you know, they don't have students yet. <clears throat> They'll be able to go out for a lunch break or something is the thought behind it. So anyways, we're trying to get the word out for there, that, but there will be a lot more selection this time. I believe one of these is the Big J's is one to participate for this Wednesday. If it isn't this one, it's next one. So, motion to approve the applications. Okay. Second. Brandon and Chelsea. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, do these have to come to us? Every time? Right now they do. We're By ordinance, they do. Yep. Okay. We're going to be talking about that, but this is kind of, we'll call this an inaugural right. run, and I think we'll have to have some discussion about that over the winter, whether we want to continue. I, I think there's I don't, a, you I don't think we need to. Agenda if you want. Yep. I mean, there's there's another mechanism, but it's just, this is all new to us, so it's probably okay that we're all involved right now, but I think it can change 
Right. Why don't we put it on consent agenda? If you would like them in the future to be consent, you can. You know, honestly, I think you direct staff to have the qualifications, you know, ask for right. the it application and the information. Yeah. You know, it's just going to be a simple deal for us, so why not put it on the consent agenda? Okay. Let's the only thing we, their job to do Right. The only thing they're down to be is if you wanted to get presented with what the fair was going to be. Otherwise, we do the okay. consent agenda, there isn't much conversation. We should just go with it. Yeah. So, but that's up to you guys. I mean, I don't, I don't care either I, way. I'm more than happy either way okay. if you'd like to put it on the agenda. Um, we'll, we'll talk about it. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. But I mean, if, unless you guys want to know what is coming to town, this is all kind of doing it. But if, otherwise, we could just consent it. And if we put it on a consent agenda in the future, if we have any others, uh, if you want to have any discussion about it, when we do consent agenda action, you can pull it. You can request anything to be pulled from the consent agenda right, we can. and then be discussed later in the regular agenda. And that's typically consent agenda. <clears throat> you typically wouldn't have any discussion on any of the right. items there. If you do want to have a discussion, the most appropriate way for it to be, it should be pulled to the regular agenda. Don't disagree. So, yep. Okay. The, so yep. Move it to the consent agenda for right now. Yep. Agreed. If we have questions, we can ask. Okay. Agreed. All right, Brent, why don't we just do that then yep. going forward. Let's put it on the consent agenda. Do that for now going forward. <coughs> okay. All right, on to number 19 then. Okay, this one I'll try to be very quick. We've worked with this individual last year a handful of times for Rookery Rock Winery. Uh, they've been, they've enjoyed coming to horse. They've been very successful in selling wine here during special use events at farmers markets. Uh, they would like to participate in the bean days and three different horse farmer markets that we have planned coming up here. Uh, so September 12th, August 28th, September 18th, and October 2nd. Uh, each one would be a $50 permit, uh, but we have to have council approval to issue a special liquor license event you know, for the day for them. So we're looking for council approval to have it on those four different dates. Uh, like I said, we've worked as a vendor before and have not had any issues with them. So moved. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. In the note, it says, uh, I will apply for the Andy Tax Department for Special yep. Use Permit. Yep, they have only so many permits that they get from the state for special events. So they don't want to, this is pretty common with a vendor like this, they don't want to use up their permit number or number of permits until they've gotten approval from the city to be able to move forward. So, like I said, the state, I believe this vendor is given like, they're given like, let's say 20 permits per the year. So they can only participate with 20 special events and they don't want to use them up. Yeah, or days. Yeah. 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 So that, that's why is he, he didn't want to use up his days because once he submits for a day saying, I'm going to do on this date, it's gone. Even if he back, even if he has a conflict or can't make it work or the event gets canceled, he can't get that day back from the state. So we approve this, then he gets his permit from the state. Yeah. And then comes back and goes to the event. You approve right. it, you approve it. If you approve it tonight, it doesn't come back to you guys. It's just if no, you No, no, he, yeah. he comes to the event and yep. he has a certificate and he's legal. Yep. What if he doesn't have the certificate? Then he won't be at the event. Okay. Because he has to be legal yep. with the state. Okay. Okay. So. She's at the state and the city yep. <laughs> Uh, this individual, I, in my experience working with him before, he's very, very knowledgeable about all the requirements. He actually helped with them in writing those requirements. So uh, it was actually a pretty interesting experience working with him before on these liquor licenses before last year, or during last year. So, all right. Yep. No, very good. Dave made a motion. Second. second. John, second. Okay. Hey, all in favor say aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. <coughs> Okay. Right-of-way permit requirements. Currently, for right-of-way permits, we charge $200 for a right-of-way permit no matter what. If you're working within the right-of-way, 200 bucks. The whole intention of that was to cover our costs or help cover our costs for indiv individuals doing work in the right-of-way, typically drainage work. What the resident here is talking about concerns about planting trees in the right-of-way uh, technically, you need to have a right-of-way permit, and it'd be 200 bucks to be able to go plant trees in the right-of-way. We're trying to encourage 
actually an ordinance is required boulevard trees so we're trying to encourage er, compliance with that and people are getting these in in the new developments covenants require that uh, we really don't have really much of an expense tied to that activity it's really just when we're evolving drainage so what we're proposing is that for any right away permit if it involves drainage work or engineer review then it's a two hundred dollar permit if it doesn't require that then there wouldn't be a permit fee tied to it because like i said we're trying to get that compliance of encouraging people to get these trees in and if they're going to do something more involved with the right way that's typically what it is uh, the only other exceptions I've typically seen is when you have utilities. In utilities, they're supposed to get a permit. Um, and with franchise agreements, they're gonna, one of the things that they look for, and what I'll be bringing back to you in an upcoming meeting here soon, is updated ordinances for the gas and the electric. And what they look for is they're more than happy to comply with doing a franchise fee. However, they look for waivers of having a fee tied to a right-of-way permit. So typically your utilities are exempt anyways. So like I said, that's what we're looking for is the approval to have the right-of-way fee only, only applicable when there's drainage work or engineer time necessary to review the application or the permit. We still encourage the permit to be filled out, but just not charge a fee for it. So that way you'd be able to see exactly what's going on. Yeah, yeah, it's more, yeah, we know. Yeah, Lucas. So for that tree issue that's already covered in the city's ordinances, because you're required to get a permit uh, before planting in the boulevard, so under uh, 3-0305, a uh, person, firm, or corporation shall not plant, possibly planted, remove, destroy, cut, deface, prune, or interfere with trees or shrubs within the limits of any street, alley, boulevard, Boulevard or other public way of the city of Elk first having obtained a written permit from the Forestry Advisory Committee. So you established that when I mean, you did this, but I don't know if we've ever established no. that committee. No. Um, but that's where the permit is supposed to come from for stuff like this. And then it says the permit shall be good only for the season stated on the same and the year issued, and no charge shall be made for such permit. Yep. So you, you kind of covered already, but the only thing you should think about is. If you're going to have a forestry advisory committee in ordinances, maybe we need to constitute one. Maybe we have that one. We, yeah. we got together. So, we had we did have a group together, I but so. that was a while back. We have not re brought them all back into the room again for a while. So, so my recommendation is on that permit, just say that uh, the excavation fee is not covered. This permit is exempt from the exemption or the excavation. Okay. That's the most simple solution right now. Mm. And if you want to change your ordinance to just say that uh, that in, in the excavation code that tree planting is exempt. <clears throat> and it could be for anything. Yeah. We're we're looking at it as just if it calls for engineer time, yeah. then there's a two hundred dollar fee. If it doesn't, there's no fee. That's why we're trying to just keep it very simple from that angle. <coughs> oh. But is that in an ordinance or is that stated in a resolution? Or be on the permit. Which part? <coughs> That's what I'm saying. T typically, fees are brought to you. <coughs> so right. any fee, and I don't know if that $200 fee was a staff decision years ago. I think that was done That's what probably I'm saying. Where before did that $200 any of us. Fee, where did we document that? Where that was probably done before any of us were here. I don't know. Well, about when you started. started. It came up from Perry because we had to. Yeah. We had so, some permit fees where. We weren't charging one, and then we had to have yeah. hundreds and hundreds of dollars of review to make sure uh, uh, drainage and everything was correct for people putting in culverts and that kind of stuff. What really yeah. spurred this was utility companies coming and making an absolute disaster of boulevards and <coughs> leaving it that way, with the city having no idea who did the work. And then once that somebody had to fix it, it was a finger pointing game. So it's a way to document who's working in the right of way and when they're working in the right of way. It's the same thing on Wall Avenue right now, there's a six foot utilities or five foot utilities and every utility is a foot and a half apart from each other versus them all coming together and being in one area. Mm -hmm. So now we gotta fight with three utilities instead of one area with more utilities. So I I, I understand you don't have to yeah. charge them with the franchise fees, but it's really good to know and this 
who's doing the work too. So that's this. you're stating that's the point is that somebody will still come. I, so I'm going to find your a bunch of trees. I would still come and get a permit. If there's no fee for the permit, just so yeah. that. Because you want to make sure that they're planting the yeah. right variety, right. 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 and that kind of stuff. Yeah. You're doing that. Yeah. You're stating the same thing. They still everybody yep. still comes and gets a permit. We're and we're tr we're trying to clean no it. fee yeah. without yep. it, if it's. Unless it needs engineering work. Try, trying not to make it a barrier for <coughs> people not to do it. And then, sense. like I said, with the franchise fees, uh, or those franchises like gas and electric, your teeth are in the ordinances tied to them specifically. So you can say you have to submit those permit app or right away permit applications. You have to do okay. that. Versus right now, it's, uh, it's tougher to get them to comply okay. because we don't have much teeth to that. So, so what Lucas read though, you said there was no tree. The tree, they say no tree. So, so that's why I'm saying, where, so where do we one. have another ordinance yeah. that had a different value? The ordinance for excavation says the registration fee for an excavator's registration for a calendar year or any part thereof shall be set by resolution of the city council. Okay. But I mean, this tree, the $200 fee that we talked about, where did that $200, yeah. where it's did we blanket. say that? It's blank. I'm They're, just saying because it's a because it's excavation. There's a blanket approach for... And I'm saying right. just Digging a hole for a tree is considered excavation? And that's what I'm saying, just follow the, the tree ordinance that says yeah. there's no fee yeah. in place. So we have you're a permit, you're not changing any ordinance. And you could change the ordinance if you want to make sure that... Well, that's no what I mean, it's, it seems... So Basically, we're just trying to clean up, make sure, limit, eliminate the confusion right. tied to it. Even though it gets confusing right now, it's... We're trying to make it to where there isn't that misconception right. of a two hundred dollar fee or anything. So, right. Russ, you had something. Does the permit require that you do case? They are required. I think North Dakota one call. Yeah, requires that. one call requires it because if you don't do a locate and you hit a line, you're responsible for it. Versus if they, oh, I fully you, understand that. if you do a locate and it's not marked properly, then you hit a line. That's on the utilities for that. I so, fully yeah. That. I'm just saying that the permit, almost, the permit should also require a for Because there's a lot of. But then we're restating what the state already mandates. Yeah. Well, yes, we are. You're just saying put it as a no. Well, I would put it on the permit application. That's what <coughs> I'm saying. Well, yeah. it, it's just a reminder. Call a box call reminding. Call so. call yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, we're not, we're not trying to enforce anything. We're just trying to save <coughs> trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eight, eight one one. Yeah. Yep. Eight one one. Not four one. Right. Eight one one. Yeah. There's quite a bit of terms. <laughs> there are quite a bit of terms. Okay, but uh, aren't Boulevard trees already required with all new developments? Yes. But like developers are trying to do it. No. Yes. Yes and no. no. It's it. Your ordinance is say there. Yeah. If somebody puts in a single house someplace, not through. Yeah, yeah. but my concern is I don't think the boulevard trees have been enforced in new developments. No. But they should be. Because you want to put a tree in before a house. Right, yeah. That's so the issue. Not in front of your insides. Yeah. They're not using them. Have you ever seen the most people? Yeah. yeah. You, you wouldn't put a tree in. It would be the last thing. Yeah. Very I could, last I can show a very. But I mean, there should be a plant in place yeah. that's part of the ordinance. That's the tree yeah. committee or whatever. Yep, that's going to be that tree yeah. committee. All right, let's circle back here, so, guys. Keep it simple. Motion to approve. <laughs> Second. All right, Chelsea We're and Dave. In the ditch, in the ditch. Okay. Yep. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, we go along. Jim. We did a couple of the big projects on the public works and engineering side of it. Southdale Farms was started last week. Southdale Farms was rained out last week. <laughs> no. <laughs> How did that South, happen? Southdale South Farms is underwater, right? Southdale <laughs> Farms is working on another plan to get their lift station in this week. So they aren't uh, in the <clears throat> best of moods right now. I did request an update from our 63rd and Lakeview and 79th contractors. I was told after 1.30 tomorrow I'll have it. Assuming you knew there was a council meeting tonight and didn't want to give me the ammunition. <coughs> so after tomorrow, I will forward that along for completion. Uh, all the paving is complete on that. What remains is bike shafts and stuff behind the curb work. So uh, they did allow the school to start using Lakeview <coughs> Drive to get the temporary road out and get the intersection of Lakeview Drive and 79th done. So traffic is going where it's supposed to be going right now. They had moved up some floors on there and from the school side to get that all get that all completed. So. 
Um, with the amount of rain that came on Friday, there was some some issue with, uh, there's a quarter of the roundabout that took on a little bit of water at a time for a little short period of time. I think that has to do with some erosion control downstream, but there's also very flat, the ditch going along Cutter Road 17 up to uh, the uh, Holman position stormwater pond, or stormwater pump station is really flat, and we've had many discussions with Northern Improvement about that ditch and it being very flat. So, the amount of rain <coughs> in a short duration, it did start backing up on there. It did go down relatively quick once that happened. And the other excitement we had on Friday due to the rain was the Lost River addition. Started the sanitary sewer, started backing up throughout the system. Not quite sure what happened yet. We're still working on that, but uh, the contractor on the fifth edition brought in a six inch pump. The city took up a couple four inch pumps and was able to emergency discharge the lift stations and get that brought in the brought into line within Took them like four or five hours to get that pump down. That system was really, really full. So mm -hmm. um, we're going to look at addressing that as soon as we get around the Lost River site. I think there might have been some manholes or something that didn't have watertight covers on them, steel plate or something over the top. All of a sudden, we get three inches of rain in, in 40 minutes, and it just pools up and it goes to go somewhere. So that's kind of where I'm leaning right now, but field staff is going to go around today and take a look at what the provisions were for for those uh, not complete structures and sanitary sewer yet. So, um, uh, the Lakeview, or not Lakeview, Maple Lake Estates, they did start with the underground last week to get washed out this week. So, yeah. That's all the fun stuff I have for you. How about the uh, school? I haven't talked to Mark in a are they still on track to ask for a temporary CO or what? <laughs> I was actually talking to Keith about it just a little before the meeting, and it sounds like they are they are going to try to be seeking a temporary CO tomorrow, and we'll see if they were able to accomplish the items that were on have their you, checklist. Have you been in there in the last couple? Okay. He's been in there almost daily. I'm assuming you've been there a lot. I was just curious, I mean, are they getting where you would think we could get to that point of doing a temp CO? There's a lot of finishes that are left. Is the outside, uh, is the outside fully done? They got some siding on back order. Uh, <laughs> they manufactured by shut, shut down due to COVID. Okay. All right. So they say, yeah, <coughs> but it's enclosed, right? Yeah, weather, All the yeah, windows, weather, weather tight and windows yeah. and that kind of stuff so they don't have potentially other things happening. Okay. Okay. Nothing else, Jim. You're good. Yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> Brenton, what do you got? Okay, Brian, if you could pull up on SharePoint under City Council meeting folder, there's water survey folder. On this one. So folder? under City Council meetings. Uh, oh. Yeah. There's a water survey folder and there's a PowerPoint there. I'm just going to run through that real quick. While you're pulling that up, I'll give a couple other updates. Um, City engineer position, the update for that, we have a draft profile that Bobby and I are working on with our consultant to get that cleaned up and have the position posted by before the end of the week, hopefully middle of the week. Uh, key dates or timelines as of right now, Application deadline will be September 14th. Um, screen review candidates September 17th through 22nd. Present candidates and reports September 30th. Final interviews will be October 16th. And we anticipate a start date mid to late November is what our goal is. It could be a little later, obviously, depending on what the applicant pool is and what the, if we go and select the candidate, what their timeline is and logistics are. If they're local, obviously it might be a little quicker than if they're not. Um, but that's a timeline, what we're looking at with that. As for building permits, we do have Keith here if you have any more, any questions tied to the building permits, but just to give you a total number, year to date, 2020, we are at 117 permits. Now permits is, we're talking a little of everything, but these are um, like remodels, re finishing a basement, deck permit, house, commercial property, uh, so quite a few different activities. But 
Uh, in comparison, when you're looking at total permits this year, 117 total permits. Property valuations of $67,092,209. That's basically on the value that the applicant states on there, on their applications. In 2019, at this time, we had 73 permits and a valuation of $42,453,982. When you're looking at total residential, just to give an example there, for residential dwellings, last year we had 35 at this time. This year we're at 58. Uh, one of the big differences is the value of the home is a little less. So they're not building as many bigger homes, but we have more homes coming through to us. So uh, just some interesting facts. And I'll try to give you updates on that throughout the season here. It might not be every council meeting. I'll try to give you some updates. Keith has a good report uh, that he has together for that. So, oh, commercial 2019 was zero, 2018 was one, 2017 is two. Uh, year to, for year to date, and 2020 is seven. So, commercial that is not just a commercial property, that's also. Um, like industrial so but that's a big difference there uh, so thank you Keith for pointing that out so yes we had quite a few different ones big differences there obviously the numbers are a little skewed because of the when you're looking at valuation because of the schools for last year and this year last year middle school this year high school and next year will be skewed a little bit also because of course elementary but it is, if you're looking at just total number of permits, that's a good indicator of what's going on too. So like I said, I just wanted to give you a heads up about that. So real quick, Brent. Yep. For 2019 total residential permits, do you have that figure? 2019 total residential year to date. I don't no, have the calendar. For the calendar, I don't know if Keith would have that, or if you have it. This is, this is year to date. Oh, yeah, but it's year to date, not for, so that's for the whole year. Uh, these are all uh, so, so 2019 18, 19, those are all through august those are those are year. yeah that's not the final that's year like, for 2019 that's to the end of this month um, yeah for those years yeah. so i don't have it available year. but we could show that next, you know in the future to you because you don't have probably anything counted for cup creek yet no there's yeah, three there's three permits three. issued so far <clears throat> yeah there are three there's probably there. a lot more coming yep so I guess my point was end of the year between August and... There's a lot more coming. Yeah. There's a lot more because I know the uh, developers, Cub Creek is available. I believe there's electrical box issue, isn't there? Aren't they trying to get electrical still out there or they got that? The transformer? Yeah. It should be solved. Okay. So Cub Creek is available. They can build in there now. Uh, they are moving very quickly on... Uh, Blosser fifth edition. I believe majority of underground is in, but they move fairly quickly. I would not be surprised if we see houses going in this fall for that one. Southdale, they're moving, and they the developer's goal and the contractor's goal is to have that one done too. So if those go online, yeah, you're going to see a wave of houses likely being built in there. Yeah, so people will try to get foundations. Yeah. Ton. Yeah. If we have a good fall that it takes a while for weather to hit, we'll probably see quite a few in there. Um, any other questions on the building permits there? No. Another good news item I wanted to share with council, I mentioned that it was either last council meeting or the one before. Uh, League of Cities has been working with the state on uh, coronavirus relief fund allocations for cities and counties, law enforcement expenses. Uh, with the corona, coronavirus funding, COVID funding from the last round of helping out states and helping people out. Uh, there is some funding for helping out with the cost of law enforcement. And what, they're, what it's looking like is that the county is going to determine the amount that the cities contract with them for those months that are covered and then reimburse us 
our al what our allocation would be. So we should be getting a reimbursement from law enforcement cost for I believe it was seven months. Yeah, five months in one setup and two months for another one. So we're looking at six, seven months of reimbursements for, due to the COVID-19 stimulus funding to help us out. So I will be working with Sheriff Johnner about that. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, we're looking at having a meeting here next week, him and I are, to catch up on a few items. So that'll be an item that I bring up and just see what his game plan is tied to that. So we you know, because I'd be more happy to give him the cost right away and say that's what we have because mm -hmm. Becky does keep track of that very well. So uh, anyways, that's good news that our costs per month are around 13,000, I believe. So that adds up really quickly. So that's a good news item there. Uh, our new mower that was approved last council meeting is already here. So we got it delivered. It was delivered on Thursday last week. So that's wow. exciting. Guys are very excited. That thing, uh, that thing will help. Uh, it, it can move a lot quicker than other mowers. So, um, but we have that. And then the last item I had uh, Brian has it up on the PowerPoint here. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I was just going to run really quick through the water survey findings. Um, year, or to date, and this has been up for about a month and a half. We didn't put a defined end date, but we're not really being the drum to get more survey responses. If we get a few more trickle in, great. But we have uh, quite, a, quite a good response rate if you think about it. Uh, 143 total responses. Um, these are, you, my understanding, unique responses. We asked individuals to put their address down to make sure that we have unique answers, if we, that we were not having a duplicate. Also, if they did not put an address down, then they're not counted in there. If they put their street down, we at least, we, we considered that and especially put it in for the comments, but we needed to make sure we didn't have, you know, a house or two uh, or yeah, individual households skewing the numbers by responding to it many times um, we offered this online we also had a paper version which once we kicked out the paper version we did get quite a few responses back on paper too uh, the paper version was included in the last utility bill uh, we had a total 143 responses 106 were horse water users while 31 were cast rule and six were on their own water when they're asked about horse users, now this is looking at just City of Horse customers that responded. So 106 respondents, 73% said they're dis dissatisfied with the overall quality of the water. Uh, when you look at, we asked them discoloration, taste, water pressure, and smell. You can see where the main concerns are. Water pressure is the least of their concerns, followed by smell, but the biggest concerns are discoloration and taste. We knew that. But this just confirms it, which helps give us more information. Uh, what Bobby put together here is just to show some of the comments. Now, we took them, you know, some of these are very blunt. So folks, the taste is horrendous. They hate the rust color. The smell, they say, is disgusting. These, like I said, these are comments straight from what they said. Um, water quality is poor and I'm changing, constantly changing water filters. Uh, we found that as a trend, a lot of folks are having water filters that they have to change out. Like I said, a lot of this information, we've heard this, but it's nice to have the data there. When we look at the next one here for horse water users, we asked them a question of how you'd be billed. So if you had a higher base, lower cost per thousand, or lower cost per thousand, then that higher base, but uh, higher cost. Lower cost per thousand, but a higher cost. Sorry. They're asked to, if they wanted to have a higher base, lower cost per thousand, or a lower base, and a higher cost per thousand. So it's, it's up here. The horse water users, 55% indicated they'd, have, they'd prefer a lower base and then a higher cost per thousand. Example of this is like West Fargo. West Fargo has a base of either seven, 725, I believe it's 725, or seven, and then the cost per thousand was 725 per foot. Where Cass Rule is a base of 28, but the cost per thousand is 540. 
So what's interesting is when you look at Casserole users, they've indicated they prefer the lower base and higher cost per thousand by about three-fourths to a quarter. So that's interesting. Now the concern is if you have a lower base rate and higher cost per thousand, average household, let's say, uses four to six thousand gallons, it will be more expensive very quickly to go with that approach than to go with the higher base, lower cost per thousand. If a resident has a higher usage, say they're irrigating their yard, their cost in your utility bill is going to shoot up a lot quicker, obviously, with that approach. So, different ways to look at it, but it's just interesting to see what the prefer what they what some of them prefer. Um, but that was coming from the casserole users. When it was horse water users, it was it was almost 50-50. Uh, overall, this is the opinions from cast rural water users, 93%, they're satisfied, 90% with color, 84 taste, water pressure is good, smell is good, pretty much everything over 80% or better. And then comments from cast rural users, they're glad they have cast rural. Um, water is more expensive than city water, but the quality is a lot better, there's way better. So that's a very quick run through. The survey wasn't very big. We tried to keep it short and simple so we get straight to the point. But I wanted to give you a quick run through of that so you know where, where the public is at on it. Uh, we've also had another survey out, not related to water, but tied to our strategic plan. We're starting to get a handful of responses on that, which is good also. And encourage anybody, if you haven't done so, please complete the survey. It helps with our strategic planning. Strategic planning, we're going to have uh, workshops or meetings tied to that uh, on September 10th and 11th, I believe it was. It was right the Thursday and Friday, the 14 days. Yep. So that's all I had. Okay. Yeah, that was good. Thank you. Yep. yep. Thank you. All right. All right, portfolio reports. I don't really have anything new tonight. So, John? I have nothing. Dave? Uh, he took it from engineer position. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. There, there you go. go. Yeah. <laughs> Chelsea, what do you got? Um, I got a proof on the Bean Days fire. So um, I don't know if you guys are aware of the list of events, but we did shorten the event to just try to be responsible with the situ COVID situation. So they, it sounds like the Lions are still going to have <coughs> pancake breakfast. Um, we'll have the 5K vendors, and we'll have live music starting at 10 a.m., and that will go till 2. So basically the brunch of it is going to be morning till about 3 o'clock, where we have the car show, um, food vendors, different things, little things. And then bingo at the senior center, and then fireworks at 9. Park board is doing a softball tournament but they have not confirmed that so I really don't have anything from on their end for the event um, there was some talk of maybe bigger was having some music at night but I felt it was m responsible on the city's <coughs> part not to go there if there were to be an outbreak and it comes back to us I just I just don't think it was the responsible thing so I hope that sounds good to you guys yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, let's not start pushing it out there a little bit so people realize that we are doing something. Yep, where you've got the Facebook event, I think there's like eight, over 800 comments on or uh, engagement yes. mm -hmm. on that. And we'll do some notifications on there that usually get a lot of interest. And we did get a handful of sponsors, Interstate Engineering, Onstead. <laughs> And a few other ones. <laughs> so we do have some good money for the event to help cover most, <coughs> most all the costs. Okay. So, yeah. cool. Then we got Jay Thomas should set up for Friday then? Yep, he'll be Friday like 2 o'clock usually. Yeah, 2 to 5. So then he's going to be to check and see if he's going to be at the fire hall. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. I figure we'll do it just like we did last year. Though. Yep, same game. 
Perfect. Um, we didn't have anything going on Friday this year. We, sh we weren't even sure if the event was going to move forward yep. at the time, so we just wanted to keep it simple. And it's been actually really nice, you know, with the staff turnover. Hannah's got a lot, and she's been doing a lot with the food trucks and the horse happenings. And the, she's trying to put together some farmer's markets. Um, so it worked out well. Chelsea, you said there's been a lot of comments made on Facebook about it? Yeah, usually with our Facebook event, we get quite a few people either interested or they'll select that they're going to the event. Mm. Um, we did have actually quite a few cars sign up. We turned it into just a, a vehicle show, so boats, motorcycles, whatever. So we did have a better sign up for the, that this year than we've had in the past. But definitely there's lots of time to sign up. So if you know anybody, spread the word, share the Facebook post. Um, vendors, 5K, vehicles, yeah, parade. Yeah, well, looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, I think people, it's really welcome. People want something to do. And I think, you know, I just hope people can be responsible. We have a lot of, a long parade route that people can spread out and find some exactly. space. Yep. And then we also have the, the parade candy throwers wear masks and wear gloves. Take those precautions. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Brian, what do you got? Uh, the only one thing, uh, met with our uh, state representatives not last week, uh, met with Michael Howe and, and Brandy Pyle, uh, they're up for re-election, uh, and also met with Mark Weber, our, our new state senator-elect, uh, he's one of the candidates, uh, so I had a chance to meet with, Brent and I met with him and, and or that group, and help them understand some of the current uh, issues and challenges and so forth that are we're facing, especially since some of the funding mechanisms at the state level have been uh, changing, let's just say. Uh, so what how, what impact that's going to have on Horace. So uh, basically inviting them to make a regular appearance, uh, come down here, you know, maybe once a quarter, something like that, present to the council and residents to let them know that, hey, you know, uh, let, not only they can hear from what's happening in the city, but also give us updates uh, on the legislative session as it starts kicking off here uh, this year. So it was a good, it was a good meeting to uh, meet our, our new candidate uh, that would be representing us. So uh, it would be, and I know they've been walking around meeting lots of residents and getting feedback from mm -hmm. Morris. So yep, that's good. We might have made them dizzy with how much we threw at them. Yeah, I think, uh, I think they were dizzy <laughs> when they got done. Good. So yeah. that was, want to make so. sure they understand. That's yep. all. Yep. Exactly. <coughs> so. All right. Anything else? Otherwise, I'm going to motion to adjourn. I second. John and Dave. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carried. <laughs> We're done. Just a reminder. Next.